Hi there folks, welcome back to the Evan Andy Fishing Channel and welcome back to the second of my two-part tutorial on how to Euro Nymph or how to use the French leader, whatever you want to call it, how we use these very modern monofilament long leader only styles of fly fishing. Now in the first video we've covered all the kit, the basics of the tactic, the kind of flies we might want to use and the very basic technique. So standing upstream fishing up and across using only a rod or a rod and a half lengths of line very very simple stuff if you haven't already watched that one and you're interested in how to fish the french leader or how to do your own infant this would be a good time to pause this one there's a link in the description below at the very top to the first vlog go and check that one out first and then come back to this one afterwards and you'll have the whole thing step by step the whole way through so having covered that very very simple stuff i now want to have a look at the ways that we can take this to the next level stuff that we can do differently from just doing the standard normal drift strike at the end, normal drift strike at the end, because it's a very versatile technique. This can do more than that. And the first bit I want to have a look at is what we do at the end of the drift. So we've talked about the quarters of the drift in the previous video. The first quarter, the flies are sinking. The second two quarters, the flies are down on the deck fishing. Now that fourth quarter is different because at that point, those flies are gonna to start to ride up no matter how long our arms are. At some point, those flies are gonna to start to ride up. And the stuff we can do at that point to induce a take or to tempt a take that we might not have otherwise found. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump back in now, we've come back down to where we started on the first vlog and see if we can induce a few takes at the end of a drift. Let's give it a go. So I guess the first thing we've got to talk about is, is what is inducing a take? What actually is that? So inducing a take is doing something different during the process of our normal drift, generally moving the flies or, or applying some kind of movement to them that might get a take from a fish that otherwise wasn't going to be interested in taking. Now to that end, I've actually changed one of the flies from what we used down here earlier. It's a caddis pattern, but it's slightly different in that this one has a bit more hackle on it. It's going to have a bit more movement. It actually looks like something that's perhaps emerging up through the water column, which is exactly what we want at the end of a drift. Because you can imagine these flies have drift through dead and as they come under the tension of the line in the rod, then they start to lift. And at certain times a year, that can be a real key feeding trigger. And actually this time of year is one of those. So we're gonna have a look at what we can do at the back end of that drift. To start with, all I'm gonna do is exactly what I was doing when I was last down here on the previous video with the very, very basic run through glasses on, obviously, cause we're winging, we're winging around beads, but I'm gonna change the little bit at the end. So we'll just creep into this pool here, get as close to this tree as I can without hitting it. Pitch those flies out. And I'm actually gonna drag them through that first part of the drift cause we don't really need that. So these flies at that will be down and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to very very slowly lift that indicator at the end and that's going to make those flies rise up in the water column. I'm going to wait till they're almost at the surface and then we'll go again. And this is just a general lift at the end of the drift. Bumping through, oh wow yeah okay that's a fish, <laughs> that's a fish mid drift. Absolutely smashed it. That's a brownie. Oh oh he's gone for the tree. Whoosh, he's just going everywhere at the moment, wow. We talked about this a lot in the first vlog, is keeping the rod tip down and just pulling the fish away from the flow line. And that's exactly what I'm doing here. Wow, this is a strong fish. Nice low rod tip and pulling away from the line of flow. Whoa, wow, wow, wow. I'm pretty sure it's a brown, it's turbo brown. Yeah, nice brownie. Nice brownie again. I'm just putting a little bit of heat on him now. Let's get him in the net, there we go. So perhaps not the fish we were after in the method we were after, but Another success for the French leader, so fish worth catching. Oof, crikey. So I'm just gonna lift him over the net. He's gonna go very, very quickly, I think. Again, quickly subdued on the two weight. It is possible. Well, that's a nice start. Perhaps not the fish in the way we were after, but a little victory for that French leader. Let's go back out and have another go. Okay, so back down here. Again, I'm, instead of casting these fully upstream, like I would do normally. I'm going to pitch these across to me because the only bit I really want to talk about here is the end of the drift. So those flies are down about now. I'm just going to give them a very slow lift and I'm hoping that fish see these rising up through the water column. The takes are very different with this. They tend to, um, they tend to actually pull the rod out of your hands. So we pitch those across there. As I say, I'm cutting out the first part of the drift totally. I'm going to drift these down. They're, not, they're ticking along the deck really nicely. And then once they're at arm's length, I'm slowly going to lift them. And that was a great example. Just as I started that lift, a fish came and grabbed them. Absolutely perfect example of what we're trying to achieve. So I guess we'll never know whether or not that little lift there was 
the thing that caught me that fish but i certainly don't think it does any harm particularly on days when you've got a good hatch happening or you feel like there's a lot of bugs moving just as you get to the end of the drift just lift the rod slightly just do something with the flies a little bit of animation can make a world of difference oh 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 oh, oh panic panic oh Oh, we're in trouble it. We're in trouble it. Yes, so <laughs> big lesson there. So I've tried to get that fish in too quickly. And if you see what's happened is the other fly got stuck in the net as we're trying to net that fish. And I ended up there attached to both the fish and the net and something there has got to break. There's a 50-50 chance of which one it is. This time it was the one that was attached to the fish. The barbless hooks, it'll fall straight out. Actually, that's a pretty good lesson to anyone who's watching this, is you've got to be really careful when you're netting fish, when you've got two and three flies on, that that doesn't happen. I'll get re-rigged up again. He took that same green caddis, and we'll see if we can do a little bit more with these induced takes, because that's clearly just worked. Okay, so re-rigged, I've gone for exactly the same fly combination as before. I really like that Hackley caddis nymph, particularly when we're fishing induced takes. I do this quite a lot. Um, there are clearly fish in this bubble line here in the faster water that are looking for bugs rising up off the deck. So we're going to go straight back out there with the same flies. Again, I'm not going to make a proper drift. I'm just going to flop that out in front of me there. And we'll drift this through. And as we get towards the end of this drift, we're going to look at raising that rod a little bit. So this point here, I'm just going to raise that rod slightly. And there we go again, exactly the same thing. The second I lifted the tip, that fish ate that fly. Absolutely perfect. This feels like a big solid fish. I'm not sure. Got a feeling this could be another one of those stockers. It looks like they're possibly just lined up. There's clearly a lot of bugs moving today, so possibly these fish are just lined up in that bubble line. And yeah, it is. It's another one of those stockers. What's happened is, as the river's got lower during the course of the summer, is this foam line here, this, this feed line, has narrowed in size. Uh, and because of that, it's compressed the fish into a lot smaller area. Now, clearly there's a lot of food going down there. And because there's a lot of food going down there, as we discussed in the first vlog with the foam food fish, analogy because there's a lot of food down there there's a lot of fish down there so a little bit of watercraft it doesn't hurt just to stop and have a look at your river clearly these fish are stacked up in areas like this at the moment right i'm not going to push this one quite as much as i did the first one he's taken that same fly again he's taken the, the hackley caddis i'm not surprised with that because it's a great fly for fishing when you're looking for an induced take oh popped him still got both flies i was playing him pretty hard that's all right we got the best out of him and again it's kind of proven that if you're in a situation like this and you feel like you've got a lot of fish in a pool particularly if there's a hatch happening be it caddis or be it olives or even during the mayfly season when you've got mayfly pouring off but seemingly the fish aren't that interested just by fishing this frenchie with the induced take just by lifting or just by bumping the flies around at the end of the drift you can get takes that you might not necessarily have got Okay, so those induced takes clearly work. There's something in that. Just by giving yourself a little bit of movement at the end of the drift, you can add something to it. Now, obviously, all the casting we've done so far in this second part has been in very open areas, really nice, riffly open areas where we've got lots of space. We've got a very similar riffly area behind us. You can see there's a wide riffle that necks down as it comes down. But there's a problem here. We've got cover, we've got trees. We've got places where we might not necessarily be able to use that normal cast. So what I'm gonna show you here, the second part of part two here, is a couple of different casts that might help you out when you've got situations like this, but you know you need to get the fly in there. Let's go and have a look. Okay, so as you can see, these trees here present a real problem because if I just do that normal cast, I'm pretty close there, I'm clanging them. That's gonna cause me real problems. The last thing you want is a team of nymphs stuck in a tree because they more often than not don't come out. So we've gotta find a way of getting this cast in there, but avoiding this. And I've got two casts here I'm gonna show you. The first one of which is an extension of what we looked at in the first vlog. But instead of pulling these flies around to the back of me here, I'm gonna pull them right around to the other side of me. And I'm gonna make the cast off my left shoulder and I'm gonna cut them in that way. And you can see that's got me over that side without too many troubles. That's got me roughly in the zone where I want to be, but it completely negates this area. It's totally cut out this tree here. So just give that a little jiggle there, see if we can induce a take. There might be some grayling in here maybe. Nice slow lift. And I'm actually gonna take a step or so upstream. I'm gonna pull those right around the side of me and over there we go. Oh, there's a fish. There we go. That looks like a nice grayling. That was perfect. So again, we're talking about a cast here that I wouldn't have been able to make had it not have been for being able to get those flies around me rather than going straight over the top. That's a lovely grayling. Really nice one. Are you going to come in nice and quick or are you going to be troubled? There we go. Good stuff. 
a really important cast that one it's one that i've shown clients before and particularly the guys who fish smaller waters all immediately go yeah that's useful i've got something i can do with that let's have a quick look at this grayling there he is there he goes there he is again and if he flaps he goes that's absolutely fine as i say that's more about having a look at that cast and the technicality of it now the key with this and the bit that people get wrong is getting a bit lazy with how far around you you bring it it's going to stretch your shoulders a little bit you might want to get into a little bit of yoga but if you can get those flies right the way around you and make sure that when you make that cast it's coming over your opposite shoulder you can cut them in towards that far side with no issues at all it's a really important one it's one you should certainly look at learning Okay, so we haven't picked up any more fish, fish in the cast we're using at the moment. And to be honest, I'd really like to get a little bit closer to that tree line, which kind of brings me on to the second cast I wanted to have a look at in this area. It's one that you guys might already use actually, particularly if you're used to fishing small streams and stuff like that. It's something we probably associate more with dry fly fishing, but actually it's definitely got a place for the nymph angler. Even though we only use a very short line, the right place, right time, it's a really effective cast and can get you into weird areas. It's the old archer, the bow and arrow cast. Just like you would with a dry fly, I'm going to creep over. I tend to not much fish much more than rod length and a bit. I'm going to compress the rod so the rod tips in the air. I'm going to let those flies go over and that gets me right up against that edge there. It gets me really tight in. Let's do that one again. It is a slightly slower method or slightly slower way of fishing the nymphs. But to be honest, most of the time I think people fish this too fast anyway. So rod over the top. Ping those out across there. That's got me right in tight. I haven't picked up a fish on that cast and to be honest I feel bloody robbed because it was perfect let's try that one again let's try one that doesn't go quite so far across we'll go for accuracy there we go let's try that there so that just gets me in a part of the pool I perhaps didn't fish before that's down at that it's fishing beautifully big long drift little strike at the end might have just felt tap them and we'll go again towards that far bank. Compress the rod to 90 degrees, tip over the top of the rod blank, fire it across, that's beautiful. And down we go, it's phenomenally fast over there. Even with this big heavy four and a half milli, I'm still actually not getting down over there. Let's try one that doesn't go quite as far across. It's ticking nicely. Hasn't stopped yet, it's still moving. So that's exactly what we were talking about. If you can just get that bow and arrow cast a little bit closer to the far side. Oh, it's a good fish. Oh, he's going under that tree. I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. Come on, the two-way. Come on, the two-way. I thought this was a grayling, but now I don't think it is. Exactly what we were saying. If you can get that bow and arrow cast a little bit closer to those trees, you've got a good chance. And I think this is a brownie. Nice and relaxed with the playing of it. Nice low rod tip. I'm pulling him away from the flow line. So at the moment, I'm holding all the aces. He's gone towards those reeds a little bit, so I'm just going to pull him away from there. Uh, he's taken a little bit of line off me there. I'm not going to panic just yet because he's got a long way to go before he gets to those trees. We turned him. He gave up on that pretty quick. Big brownie. Come on, in you come. Big paddle on him. He's trying his best. So I've just put a little bit of heat on him by raising the rod in the last 10 seconds or so. He's not quite ready yet. Powering the lower half of the blanks too much. Now I can lift him. And he's in the net. So that was really cool. That's exactly what we were looking for there. Just by being able to ping those casts a bit closer to the trees than we were getting with the normal round the world cast, of that way, it's just bought as a fish. Again, absolutely essential cast, something that at some point during your French lead or your, your, your own infant journey, you're going to want to learn to ping those into the little gaps because it's amazing how many fish it'll pick you up. Let's have a look at this guy. There we go, big solid brownie. He was hugging those trees. He's not daft. He knows he's much safer up against those trees. But by having a cast that can get us across there, it gets us in the danger zone, it'll buy us a couple of fish. That little bow and arrow, absolutely essential. 
So that was really cool. I feel like we've covered everything I wanted to here in terms of those two casts that are off the wrong shoulder or around the world or whatever you want to call it. Uh, and we've done a bit of bow and arrow and we've bought ourselves a fish on each that we might not have caught otherwise if we didn't have those casts in the locker. The next bit I want to look at is the final part of this series. And it's the really important bit. This is the bit where you start to take the French needle to the next level. So you're going to want to watch this. Let's go. Okay, so we've had a look at inducing takes and animating those flies to try and get a few takes at the end of the drift and that's worked really nicely. We've gone through a couple of different ways of making those casts. We've got the one around the back of the head and we've got the little bow and arrow. It gets us in different places. But I've left the really important bit till last because it's really important, I think, that you've got a foundation before you get to this point. The whole time we've been filming these two vlogs, we've been using no more than a rod and a half length worth of line, maybe two lengths at the absolute most. But these French leaders are eight, nine, ten meters. And this is where the real skill comes in this. And this is the bit that's hard and needs work. It needs some practice. It's extending this line out, extending those drifts, getting more of this French leader out there. It's particularly hard in shallow water with quite light flies, which is what I've got on at the moment real real trick but it's a fantastic way of extending the drift it keeps the flies in the water longer it's more stealthy it keeps you away from the fish you catch more fish if you can fish the french leader at length but it is a little bit tricky so come with me and i'll go through how i figured out to make this a little bit easier ready shades on so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to throw these behind me with about a rod and a half length worth of line out in exactly the way i've been doing for the last two vlogs so we chuck those out there and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to pull another spin and a half of line off there and I'm going to throw that directly in front of me and not putting that anywhere near the fish. Then I'm going to pull a bit more off and I'm going to throw that behind me and I think at that I've got enough line there and then we're going to flip the whole thing up and across and you see how it's gone a lot further than the previous drifts. Then just like before I've got to lift that indicator but now I've got to do it really gently. And this is the first time during filming these vlogs that the left hand has had to get involved. So I'll show you that again. So one behind, I'm gonna just use the tension of the water to suck that line up. And again, tension of the water sucks it up. We make that across into that bubble line. And then all of a sudden my left hand is retrieving lines. I've got so much out that if I needed to strike, I couldn't. So what I'm doing here, it's called a figure of eight retrieve. It's a really important one to know. So I've got the line underneath the trigger finger of my rod hand. So I pinch with two, pull with three, pinch with two, pull with three, pinch with two, pull with three, pinch with two, pull with three. You'll probably find much better tutorials on YouTube about how to do a figure of eight retrieve. I'm sure that people have got a much easier way of doing it than I have there, but it's really important that you know this because we're going to use that in combination with a normal strip to keep in touch with these flies. If we didn't throw any retrieve out there, if we just threw the flies out with no retrieve, I need arms the size of giraffes to keep that indicator up. That's very, very hard work. You can't do that all day. That's not going to work. Work that fly down back out. So out into the flow line. Just lift that indicator just off the water and be really gentle with it. And then get that figure of eight in and just keep in touch with the indicator. Can see there I've not moved it too much the indicator stayed pretty steady the whole time and out into the flow line so I'm just gently lifting that indicator this is one of the places where that long rod comes in really handy because it gives you a gives you a big long lever to be able to oh possibly a take big long lever to be able to pick up that indicator go a little bit further up there and again big long rod pick the indicator up and I'm looking for exactly the same kind of indications that I was looking for before, like that, where it stopped. Apart from it's going to happen further away from me. It's a little bit harder to spot. Throw the flies behind me. Use the surface tension. And across into the flow. Gently pick that indicator up. Figure of eight with the left hand. Got myself a bit wrapped up there, but it's okay. That stopped there, so I've got a strike. We are in very, very shallow water here. I'm expecting to find more fish as we move in to the more oxygenated stuff a bit further up. Just on the casting side of this, there'll be a temptation to try and cast it 
like a fly line. And eventually you can. And actually, I'll probably do that more often than I use the technique that I'm showing you guys right now. But work up towards it, because if you get it wrong, it's ever so tangly. You'll find it far, far easier to start with to use the friction of the flies in the water to pull that line out for you. Back out there. Indicator up. Not a fish, but a good indication using the friction of the line on the water. And again, nice long rod, indicator just out of the water. Okay, so at this point, I've got to start looking at this tree here. This is a real problem for me now, because if I make these big long casts with an upright rod, I'm in that tree. So all I've got to do here is adjust the plane that I make the casts on. So rather than come over my shoulder, I'm going to do more round arm casts. And that just gets me across without putting me in any danger of hitting that tree. Where's that indicator? There we go. Nothing on that one. We'll keep walking up this pool. So we switch back to the foam line. Get that indicator up. Oh, there's a fish. There we go. Nice brownie. Nice brownie. Again, in real skinny water, and we're talking water there that's probably only 18 inches deep. So we couldn't have got anywhere near that fish without using this technique. There we go, lovely fish. Nice wild brownie. Gorgeous little fish. Bright red spots. Back you go. Yeah, really cool. That's exactly what we were looking for. So nice long cast into very shallow water. Uh, there'll be a few anglers out there who kind of consider the art of, dry, of fly fishing to be cast in a dry fly drag free and there'll be a lot of anglers out there who understand that actually this is this has become one of the real arts in the modern fly angler it's been able to present small flies in through shallow riffles to spooky fish like these that's really really cool and it's a great way of catching a few more fish on those days where otherwise it would have been quite hard let's see if we can catch one more okay so we'll go back to the very start on this one we've only got a short length of line out the tip but i've got a little bit more line to shoot so i'm going to throw it behind me and then I'm going to let that water behind me act as tension to suck these flies up a little bit further out. And one more. And away they go. And we get that rod tip up. Oh, possibly a fish straight away. Into that nice shallow riffly stuff. Good oxygen in there. Expect there to be a few fish in here. That's nice. Indicator just off of the water. I'm not pulling too hard on anything. And there we go. There's another one. Another brownie. Again, in super skinny, shallow water that, you know, if we'd have just charged straight through using a rod length of line, I don't think we'd have caught that fish. But because we've now got the ability to go a bit further with these presentations, to lift that indicator up gently and to just keep in touch with them, we've got a chance of catching fish with a French leader at much longer range. Come on, buddy. You're going back anyway. Come on. Come on. There we go. Little cracker. Back he goes. What do you reckon, IB? Have we got time for one more fish? <laughs> I think that's an affirmative. So we're going to keep going through the shallow river. We'll get one more fish. I'll try and explain to you again how I'm fishing this. And then I think IB and I best go and get some Prosecco. I owe one big time. Okay, so we start from scratch again in the water in front of us, in the water behind us, and we're just using the friction of those nymphs in the water to pull this line out through the butt ring. There we go, that's a nice cast. Indicator just up, that's a lovely area. Oh, there's another one, wow, it is stacked with them over there. Absolutely racked with fish. Beauty, absolute stunner. So I think the hook's out. Yeah, the hook's out of him. A little bit wrapped up. There we go. Gorgeous Derbyshire wild brown. That's what it's all about. They're the fish we want. Sweet. Well, that went really, really well. And I get the feeling if IB and I carried on fishing up through this riffle, we could catch another 20, 30, 40 of these fish. But I can't stress enough, these are fish that would have been very, very hard to catch if we were just fishing at a rod length on the French leader. 
I think these fish would have been hard fish to catch if we were using something like the duo rig as well because we've been like quite a lot of fly line down there'd be that big dry fly drifting around the drift wouldn't be right I really do think that in certain situations and this is definitely one of them that if you can range fish a french leader if you can fish this at four five six rod lengths you've got a huge chance of catching some really really cool fish Okay, once again, in we go. So we start with a short line and all I'm gonna do is use the friction of the nymphs in the water to get the rest of that line out through the butt ring. I'm gonna go a couple of steps across this time and try and get it. Oh, that was horrible. That was a dreadful cast. But I'm gonna try and get it a little bit further over towards those trees because my feeling is that might be a good place for a big trout. There we go. There we go. What have we got? What have we got? Another trout. Nice brownie to finish. I, I beat, I promise, that's the last fish. Another small fish, but absolutely beautiful. Back you go, buddy. And that, I think, will probably be that. I think the best thing to do now is IB and I are going to climb out. And I just want to go through some of the stuff we've been through in the second part of this two-part vlog. The important bits that I want you to remember. And a brief overview of what we've talked about in both episode one and two of this two-part series. So, a really enjoyable, very short session there. Part two of this two-part series about how to fish the Euro Nymph or the French leader. I really hope this has helped some of you guys out who perhaps weren't quite so sure what they were doing with it or if you've tried it before and just couldn't get to grips with it. I hope some of the information here has been useful. I just want to go through some of the key bits we've talked about in this second part, some of the really important bits. So, obviously, we started off fishing at a very short line, but we were talking about inducing takes, doing something different at the end of the drift. And on some days, that can be the difference particularly in the middle of summer when you've got good hatches of olives and sedges there's nothing wrong at the end of that drift just letting a few swing around and drawing the rod up slowly and as you saw that can pull takes that you might not necessarily have got if those flies had just dead drifted close to the water the fish are actively looking for bugs that are rising up through the water column i've always said that if we could tie a nymph that sank like a brick and then slowly float it back to the surface. You could catch every fish in the river because that's a real feeding trigger. The easiest way of replicating that is on the French leader. During the winter, if you're grayling fishing, rather than going for that big lift right the way through the water column, which in all likelihood they're not going to follow, try just a few little taps, a little bit of animation, just as it's coming to the side of you. Just a little tap and a little bop here and there, and you'd be surprised. You'll get one, two, three grayling will follow those flies across, and eventually one of them will lose patience with it and hit it. It's also a great thing to do if you're fishing a slightly coloured water and you're using stuff like the squirmies. If you can get those squirmies into the side and just give them a little bit of animation, geez, that can drive fish absolutely wild. Really, really important technique. The second area we looked at in terms of advancing the way you fish the French leader was a few different casts, a couple of different ways of presenting these flies in areas where it's a bit more overgrown or a bit more tricky. So we talked about that cast off the wrong shoulder, the one that I either call, call the round the world cast. Absolutely essential if you're fishing areas where you've got lots of overhanging trees, lots of bushes, lots of areas where you want to get towards that far bank but there's something in between you and it. Really important cast as you see it kept me miles away from those trees kept me perfectly safe I could fish all day I didn't tag the trees once really really important it's one you really want to learn the other one the one that's probably a bit more common is that bow and arrow cast and that might seem like a bit of a wild card given the kind of technique we're using but as you saw there were times there where I needed to get even closer to that cover and just being able to creep right in and ping those flies exactly where I wanted them absolutely crucial to be able to do that it's a pretty easy skill it takes a little bit of practice it's one of those things that I'd practice in the field for five minutes if you've never done it before rather than just going straight in because if you climb in the water trying to do bow and arrows, you'll find you're more often than not sticking hooks in. If not your fingers, then you're sticking them in trees on the far bank. So get a little bit familiar with the feel of a bow and arrow. But absolutely essential if you want to be a, a, an all-round angler with these modern nymphing techniques. It's one you need to know. The last thing we looked at, and in my eyes the most important, is lengthening out the amount of line we're using when we're fishing the French leader and it's absolutely the best way of catching fish out of shallow water particularly as you've just seen. I just don't think I'd have caught any of those fish with basically any other technique. Certainly I wouldn't have caught them if I was fishing a shorter line on the French leader because I'd have spooked them in 18 inches of the water. They're not going to let you get that close to them. Those fish in the deeper water that we were picking up on the induced take 
they're pretty comfortable in there. They had the tree for cover, they had deep water for cover. These fish up here had no cover at all, so being able to present longer buys you some fish. When you first get into that, please do remember to let the flies drop in the water as you're trying to extend that line out. If you try and cast it, yeah, it'll work three times out of five, but the other two times out of five, you might find you hit the rod tip or you tangle the flies. It can be a really awkward one to start with, so I would suggest, even though it's slightly slower, it takes a little bit longer, practicing that technique of using the friction of the flies in the water to extend the cast. It's also important with that longer one that you get your arm right out, get the rod tip high and lift that indicator gently. If you lift it really roughly, you risk moving the flies and there could well have been fish looking at those flies. And if they're ripping down the river really, really quickly because you've just picked the indicator up too quickly, they're not going to eat them. And also that figure of eight retrieve, it's a really, really important thing to be able to know as well as stripping line. It just helps keep you in a bit more contact and it's constant movement. It sounds silly, but it's one of those things you could actually practice just sat at home while you're watching TV. Just get a reel out, peel some line off, get it in your lap, and just practice pinching with two, pulling with three. Pinching with two, pulling with three. And you'll find that the more you do it, the faster you can get it, up until the point where your fingers are blur, and you're keeping up with those flies really, really effectively in the water. If you're too slow, if you're not keeping up with them, they'll be slack in the system, and when that indicator dips or stops, you'll not hit the takes because you've got too much line out. Well guys, that completes part two of this two-part series into how I fish these methods. As I said at the start of the first vlog, there will be people out there who do this totally differently. It's such a versatile method, it's got so many strength that there'll be loads of different ways of doing it and I don't expect that everyone fishes this the same way as I do. This is how I fish it, it's how I teach it and as you've seen from the last couple of vlogs, we pick up a couple of fish doing it. It's certainly a good place to start. Please do, if you've enjoyed the vlogs, uh, give it a like, we really appreciate that. If it's something that you're going to look at getting into, please let me know in the comments section. That'd be really cool if we can find out that we've converted a few fly anglers to the dark side of uh, your own infant. If you already do it and you've learned some stuff in here that you didn't know, again, please let us know. We really appreciate that. If there's anything we think we could improve on or anything you do differently, I'm a totally open book with all this stuff. So please let us know if there's stuff you differently. It's absolutely fine. I need to give an absolutely massive thanks to IB, who's been very, very patient in filming this. It's taken a little bit longer today than we thought, <laughs> and she's been an absolute star. So IB, thank you very much. The plan is that once we've finished filming this, IB's taking the rod and she's going to go and catch a few. So thank you. Thank you very much to everyone who's watched the vlog. Really appreciate it. Give it a like, give it a share. Let us know what you think, and we'll catch you again for another vlog very, very soon. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye-bye.